containers in Haskell. I mean, uh, Johan has his little take on strict and strict data and all these kind of things. But they're still ultimately pointing at something in kind star. Right? And so you, you always have this, well, maybe that thing is, 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 has to be evaluated. We have to worry about pointer tagging, all of these, all of these horrible things. Um, but even if you just say, I want to build a doubly linked list or a singly linked list in Haskell with mutable, with mutable references, what do we have? I make like a, a linked list object, and I put it in an IO ref, which holds a maybe of the next thing. Okay, well, the IO ref is an object that lives on the heap. That references a mute var, which lives on the heap, which now references my maybe, which lives on the heap, now which references my thing. There's three levels of indirection between me and the thing that I'm trying to chase the pointer to get to. Now, I can inline the IO ref, which gets rid of one of them. I can add a nil constructor to my data type, which gets rid of another one of my indirections, but I'm still left with, I'm pointing at a mute var which is a thing in hash, which is unlifted. It's a garbage collected object that lives out on the heap that points to my actual target, okay? So every time I try to implement a doubly linked, uh, even a link, singly linked list in Haskell, I have object indirection, object indirection, object indirection. So if I am memory limited, in term, if I'm memory bandwidth limited in terms of the performance of my application, I have lost a factor of two in every application that I want to do that implements a mutable linked list. Okay, so this is the problem that I have. And so um, there's been various attempts, I think, over the, <laughs> for a long time people have been chewing on the idea of, well, how could I actually shove a mutable reference directly into an object in Haskell? How could I just shove it in as I field in something that lives in star? But even if I did that, I have a problem. We case analyze on things in star, and we just kind of rip out the parts and throw them all over our code, and then we put them all back together again. That's why a mute var lives as its own object on the heap something that can be independently marked as dirty, told to the garbage collector, and worked with. Now, we have an array type, we have an object type that can hold a bunch of mutable pointers together. We call them arrays. <laughs> okay? And we can do card marking on our arrays. And our, our primitive array types live in hash. They're unlifted, just like mute var itself. So, I had the question of, can I, uh, I was actually playing around uh, doing a bunch of porting of closure style transients to Haskell, which when I found all of the internals of all of the array primitives. And I had the idea, well, maybe what I can do is we can make arrays point directly at other array objects. And that's what we have this, there's this array array type that's buried down in the bowels of GHC prim that nobody ever even looks at, which is an offshoot of what happened for data parallel Haskell. There are arrays that point directly at other arrays. Which the other arrays are still in hash but they're garbage collected objects, so the, the garbage collector doesn't really care, right? These things can never be thunks. They will always be an actual object with um, so many slots in them with direct pointers to other things. So that's what I wound up building was this horrible little wrapper, which, um, let me see if I can put the source here. <laughs> yes, no pointer exceptions. We are getting all, of, like, if, if, you know, Tony Horg made a billion dollar mistake, right? That just means that there's a billion dollars on the table. So, um, so what I have now is, if I can scroll down and find it, a data type named object. So in here, do you see object? Well, yeah, but I reference object a few places here. I'm, scro I'm scrolling on somebody else's laptop, so I'm confused. Object. So object holds a small mutable array hash, any, okay? So what I'm doing is we have small arrays, which Johan gave us so that we could, which were basically the old arrays that we had before we added card marking. So I'm trying to remove the card marking overhead because these things are gonna be typically very small. Um, I'm just gonna shove stuff in them. And the things I'm gonna shove in them are other small mutable arrays by horribly unsafe coercing the primitives that work with the existing arrays that we have to take arguments of a different kind, okay? And this works. Um, <laughs> and then the thing that I can do that makes this thing more interesting is, so the problem was is that I need to be able to make an inhabitant of hash because I want a very cheap null pointer check. So I make a box that contains a null object. And then I unsafe coerce, really unsafe pointer equality because it wasn't unsafe enough. So let me compare null with the, uh, with the destroy unwrapped version of the thing. So this is actually comparing something in kind hash with something with kind star for pointer equality, saying they're different and we're good, or, or that they're the same. Now I can actually build classic object-oriented horribleness 
Um, this will look at like a link cut tree. And I put a bunch of machinery to give me like strongly typed slots and stuff inside of here. But here what I have is a tree. It's just an object. The struct class just tells me that it's coercible back and forth to an object. Um, I have, hey, th this link cut thing contains a link cut as its various members of the array. And it has some Haskell data types as a couple of other members of the array. We have a new <laughs> constructor that sets initializing all the fields to nil or a or whatever appropriately. We can implement link and cut straight out of a classic computer science text. Um, this is based on the splay tree implementation. So we have, literally, we can come down here and there's a splay tree that's doing mutable construction of all of the crazy zigzag whatever nonsense. And now what I have is a data structure that I can build in Haskell that is mutable, that I can get a monoidal summary of the path to the root. I use Haskell's monoid class. All of the things still work. It's evil. It's an imperative mess. But all my objects point directly to the next object, and I've cut that factor of two in direction. Now, uh, Ryan Yates was talking, I believe, earlier about uh, some TM struct stuff that he's been doing, which lets us have uh, boxed and unboxed things in the same array. And basically, the next step of this is to move from this to something like that plus some frozen cases, et cetera. And then we'll be able to have, uh, like the hash array map try can get about a factor of two times faster in terms of just raw memory.